inevitably we return as we have done to the story of the proposed takeover is it ever going to happen of Manchester United the Glazers still in situ at the top of the football club we know about the Qatari bid we know about the Sir Jim Ratcliffe bid but now we hear this morning to a collective moaning and groaning from uh, Manchester United fans countrywide that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is now reportedly considering making an offer for a 25% stake in United that could leave the Glazer family in control of the football club. Um, let's get more on this, Simon. Top business journalist Dominic O'Connell knows the workings of Ineos. He has interviewed Sir Jim Ratcliffe on numerous occasions. And he's a hard man to get a hold of, but we've got a hold of him. Dominic joins us live. <laughs> Dominic, good morning to you. Um, good morning. Not that hard to get a hold of, surely. <laughs> oh, mate, you're a man in demand. Um, <laughs> what is what is the strength or otherwise of this story? Is it now indeed true, Dominic, that Sir Jim is considering or will now only make an offer um, for a 25% stake in the club? Well, I have not had that directly confirmed from the Ineos camp, but uh, given it's being widely reported, I've I'm pretty sure it is true. And also, it's a logic. if you think about it, it's a logical extension of what's been happening with the bidding process so far. In that at first, it was it, the idea was that it would be a, a, the outright sale of the club. Then it was uh, an offer from Ratcliffe for a significant majority shareholding in the club. And now the next step, uh, it seems to be, is, a, is he will be a minority shareholder. And all this really is fueled by the delay as well, is fueled by what appears to be a lack of unanimity on the in the Glazer camp about what to do with Manchester United. Is it true that um, Sir Jim's original proposal uh, was 67% owned by the Glazers, but that he himself knew he would face significant legal challenges from the club's minority shareholders? The difficulty with this is, the difficulty with bidding for Manchester United is that there are two types of shares. There's the B shares, which is the ones that the Glazer family hold, and they have almost all of the voting rights when it comes to the d deciding the future direction of the company. And then there's the A shares, which are the ones that are quoted on the New York Stock Exchange. So any deal has to uh, get a hold of the B shares. Now, there's a complication on top of this, or a majority of the B shares. The complication on top of this is that the company's um, what we would call the Articles of Association here in the UK, dictate that when the Glazers lose control of those B shares, they convert to the A shares. So you've got to do a very careful bit of corporate finance structuring to make sure that if you're buying those B shares, you also retain control of those voting rights. Otherwise, you're, you're paying a premium for control that you're not getting. So this, the, the detail and the structure of the deal would have, you know, is 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 the killer. And the other thing about this 25% deal, what we don't know, and which really is, I think, the most important thing is, what is the subsequent deal? It, how does Ratcliffe then get from 25% to control? Because I don't think, uh, ever, you know, knowing him a bit, that he is at all interested in taking a stake in Manchester United just to sit on the sidelines. Right. <laughs> so what do you think is at play here, Simon? Oh, well, but I think I think this is exactly as Dominic has described it. Absolutely, as he described it, and I think the interesting principle is that there's a there's a perception in people's minds that don't really understand the dynamics of this deal that the Glazers are a homogenous group in terms of that they're all aligned, and they're not. I would imagine that Avram and Joel are aligned in terms of being more bullish about the valuation of Manchester United and looking to bigger opportunities further down the line, whereas the other siblings, whether that's Darcy, whether that's Kevin, whether it's Edward or whoever it is, I think probably are the ones that are probably more um, in tune with the idea of a disposal. But Dominic has outlined it about the voting rights, about the restructuring, about the classification of how they revert to a certain voting perspective after they're sold. It is a very, very complex deal. Now, obviously, um, Jim Radcliffe has a modus operandi. He has been at the table for some time. I think he's paying a premium for Manchester United in today's marketplace, but for whatever reason he wants to do that, and however he wants to do it, and the engineering of it requires some very sophisticated thinking. Of course, once you're in the door and you have 25% of a business, you can start building the, mo the, the, the motivation and the mentality of how you can acquire the other shares. But again, you're dealing with not a group that, as, as Dominic alluded to, that people assume are homogenized. It's not an homogenized group. There are, four, there are six siblings that probably, to some extent, have slightly different ideas. Am I in the right direction, Dominic, or am I going off on the wrong tier? Well, it's been pretty widely reported, and I've spoken to people at Ineos who, who pretty much confirmed this, that Joel and Avram want to keep 
uh, in Manchester United. That's my point. Uh, but but their siblings, Brian, Darcy, Edward, and Kevin, they want to leave. Now I, I suspect that you know there's been lots of deals done like this in the past that that quarter percent that that twenty five percent stake will have. On top of it, some kind of derivatives contract, something like that, a put or a call option, yep. which will, in essence, over time, give Ratcliffe the opportunity, the first call, to take majority ownership of the club. Um, Dominic, various questions coming in from United fans, and they want me to ask you, how would you assess Sir Jim's appetite, if you like, to get a hold of Manchester United? He get, what is the man like? You know him, we don't. He came in late for Chelsea. And of course, we know how that finished. Bully and uh, Iqbali got a hold of the football club. Um, here we are now, and it looks like it's going to be a minority stake if it's anything. What's his appetite in terms uh, of getting a, a say in the running of Manchester United? It, I well, I've spoken to him about it a few times, um, although probably four or five months ago now. And he is he is extremely keen to get a hold of Manchester United. The other thing to remember about Jim Ratcliffe is he he doesn't like. A, he doesn't like losing, and B, he doesn't like doing business without the sense that there's going to be some gain at the end of it. So his view on Man U, as expressed to me, is that he sees it as one of the, well, he's expressed this publicly, isn't there's it? hardly any revelation. He sees it as one of the few clubs in the world that can cover its day-to-day -day operating costs from its own revenue, from the sale of merchandise and ticket sales and all that sort of stuff. And then if you invest on top of that, uh, you know, you, you should do well over the long term. But it will not be a continual drain on his coffers. That's what that's his view. And that in ten years' time or twenty years' time, when you know, it comes for the next stage in the ownership of Manchester United, he will make a profit on his investment. He's not in this to lose money, uh, but he does love Manchester United. That must be said. While we have you with us this morning, Dominic, um, it's reported that Sheikh Yassim, the Qatari bid remains intent on a 100% takeover. But it's becoming clearer that the Qatari offer remains well short of the Glazers' £6 billion valuation. Is that right? And is he dropping out the picture? I don't know. But um, assets have a price. And people's, people's view of the ownership of those assets can be uh, moved with price. Second guess it for me, Dominic. What's the end game here? How's this going to finish? Um, I don't know really. I I suspect the the Glazers think that they can probably get more money out of this. They probably think that football club valuations at the moment are, if not plateaued, perhaps a little bit down. Actually, TV rights deals have have not you know continued to go up and up and up. It may be that they think playing a longer game would be better here. Uh, so, but Ratcliffe is very dogged in his pursuit. He knows the Glazers well. You know, he's had a, a lot of contact with them over the years, um, and and he is keen. Just the other thing that's in the back of my mind about all this is that, and people haven't paid too much attention to, is that Ratcliffe made it clear to me that even if he is successful in buying Manchester United. There is no prospect of him coming back to the UK. He is a he's a tax resident in Monaco. He lives in Monaco, and he's not. You know, so he will be a uh, you know a non-British uh, as a non-British resident owner of Manchester United, which was something that the Manchester United fans did not like about the Glazers. So he would be a, 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 an absentee uh, landlord, if you like. We we would not be seeing him at Old Trafford. Well, you, I think you would, because he can come to the UK for a certain number of days a year. <laughs> but, but you know, this idea of the wealthy, non-UK taxpaying, oh, I think he'd definitely be hands-on. Right. Non-UK taxpaying um, person uh, into British football. You know, that I whole idea is, is sort of falling out of favour. But he's not going to come back just because he owns Man U. It seems that the two Glazer brothers that you mentioned seem hell bent. To, to remain at Manchester United, whether United fans like it or not, Dominic? Um, well, we don't know that for sure. I mean, the, if tomorrow it was announced that the club had been sold to Qatar for £8 billion, pounds, would you be that surprised? I don't think so. It, the, 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 nobody really knows what's going on apart from the fly on the wall of the, uh, of the Glazer family dining room, I suspect. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you followed the process... Dominic, in terms of their positioning. Obviously, the marketplace, the Rain Group saw an opportunity a while ago when the first indication... It's interesting that you talk about the television rights going in a certain direction because the perception is that the broadcast deals that are about to be happening uh, with the domestic rights are going to get bigger. 
and the overseas rights have gotten bigger as a matter of course and there are other revenue streams coming on 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 down the line so it would seem that that's not quite correct that the broadcast revenues around uh, the premier league are actually going to get bigger but when you look at the way that the glazers have put this into the marketplace how the rain group have positioned themselves in this mix what do you make of this whole process well, it's a fairly straightforward process, it seems to me. You, you you want to sell something, you hire an advisor to sell it, like you hire an estate agent. All these deals are done with the, with the help of specialist investment banks, and Rain Group happens to have come. To, but you have an understanding of what you want, though, Dominic, don't you? And I've sold, I've sold businesses, and I look at it and go, well, I've got an indication of what I think this business is worth, and of course I'm going to push the envelope and try and get as much as I possibly can. But it seems to have been this moving feast from the get-go that they've got all these different moving parts. No one's in agreement... You You've got two sets of the two two parts of the Glazers family that are looking at a bigger value further down, and you're you're absolutely right. If if Qatar were prepared to pay eight billion now, they'd probably take it and write off. But the bottom line is, is the market isn't at that price. So it seems like a very disjointed process. It seems like an element of a fishing expedition to find out what the market would do. Well, well, I, I I totally agree. It could well just be a fishing expedition because it's well worth paying rain to get out and see what the, who yeah. can flush out the bidders and see if you get, see if you get a different price. Uh, also, when you do have sales situations that drag on, it normally indicates that the that the selling side is not unified. Yeah. Dominic O'Connell, I, I called you, of course, and quite rightly, top business journalist, of course, Times Radio business journalist as well. Thanks for your time, Dominic. Thank you. There we are. That's the latest on uh, Sir Jim's pursuit of Manchester United. Is it a minority stake? We shall see. It's half 11. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.